If you or someone you know struggles with PTSD or CPTSD, you're definitely, definitely gonna wanna watch this video. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I have a very, very special guest today. Her name is Kalayla from the channel Post Traumatic Victory. Her channel is all about PTSD and recovery. It is so, so, so good and I've been waiting months for this collab. But anyways, before I jump into the video I did with Kayla in a second, I wanna give you all a very exciting announcement. So everybody who is over on Patreon, I just put up uh, the the sample that Kay from the channel Bipolar Pug sent me. Those of you who haven't seen it yet, me and her just did an episode, she's getting back into music. I'm like, yo Kay, how about you write me a new intro song for my, uh, my, my channel? And she's like, okay, and she did it, and here's a little sneak peek, but the entire thing's up over on Patreon. We talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So it's, it's longer than that, so if you want to listen to the full thing, head over to Patreon. Everybody who's signed up, you'll be able to hear the full thing. But I'm very excited, and hopefully I'll be able to implement that soon in the intro. So yeah, Kalayla is someone I met. She's another mental health YouTuber. I met her when my channel was much smaller and I was first got, getting started, and I love her so much. She's so awesome and funny and amazing, and she's very knowledgeable and compassionate, and like, I just, I just can't. I cannot even. So anyways, Kayla has a service dog and I was like girl you need to come over and talk about how your service dog helps with your PTSD CPTSD and she finally did that so anyways this this video is extremely informational I learned so much stuff but anyways I'm gonna shut my mouth and hand it over to Kalayla hello rewired soldiers I'm Kalayla and I'm so excited to be finally doing this collaboration with Chris here I am and I want to talk to you about the benefits of a psychiatric service dog for PTSD or complex PTSD. I have a condition called complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which is basically post-traumatic stress disorder, but from repeated and prolonged trauma, usually during childhood. I'm currently owner training a service dog for this condition. Um, she's specifically gonna be a psychiatric service dog for my psychiatric disability. Um, fun fact, PTSD is legally considered a disability here in Canada, at least. I believe it is in the States too. And a lot of people ask me what a service dog can do for a psychiatric disability because it's not life-threatening, right? Wrong. <laughs> it can absolutely be life-threatening given the fact that so many people with PTSD and complex PTSD will attempt suicide at least once in their life. A not so fun fact is that in Canada, one in 10 people will be diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder at some point in their lives. There's a lot of people who have PTSD and we just don't really hear about it because society in general is so focused on one specific type of trauma and that is war. So if I tell people, oh, my service dog in training is for my complex PTSD. They, nine times out of ten, will ask me, oh, were you in the military? Usually, I feel a little bit annoyed, but I try to take that opportunity to educate that, no, there are many different types of trauma. Um, I have a lot of respect for people who serve in the military because I think that's just such a selfless thing to do. <laughs> and I'm glad that program dogs often go to um, veterans with PTSD, but I'm only talking from my experience today. So <laughs> I'm gonna kind of list off some of the things that a psychiatric service dog can do to help you if you have PTSD or complex PTSD or autism or just any number of psychiatric disabilities. Dogs are amazing. <laughs> a common misconception about psychiatric service dogs is that they're actually just comfort animals, like emotional support animals, which ESAs are real and very important, and I think it's amazing that somebody came up with the concept of emotional support animals, because if an animal can give you a reason to get out of bed in the morning, that's amazing and beautiful. But there's a difference between emotional support animals and service animals. A service animal 
um, performs tasks to help mitigate a disability, whereas an emotional support animal just provides comfort and companionship. So there is a difference, but that's not to say that a service dog doesn't also provide emotional support. I mean, my service dog is my best friend. <laughs> is that sad? You're also my best friend. I have two dogs and they are both moving my camera right now. Hi puppies, let the mama make a video. Hi, yes, I'm talking about you, did you know? The tasks that a psychiatric service dog can perform to help mitigate your disability, or mine specifically, are um, deep pressure therapy is, can you not move my tripod puppies? Deep pressure therapy is a big one. So basically the dog can put pressure on your legs and your chest and uh, mine kind of leans on my, <laughs> my service dog in training leans on my chest and puts pressure on my shoulders, um, just cause that's what works for me. When we're out in public and I'm sitting down, she will go across my legs. And basically what that does is it works like a tight hug or a weighted blanket to tell your nervous system that it can stop <laughs> making you panic. It can calm down eventually because your body is telling your brain to tell your body that everything's fine. <laughs> it's a very physical reaction, as I'm sure you know, if anybody here has ever had a panic attack or a dissociative episode, it is mental, but it's hugely physical. So telling your body to calm down will eventually calm your mind. And that is deep pressure therapy, I guess, in a nutshell. I'm not a medical professional, so I'm sorry for the lack of medical terms here. <laughs> my particular service dog in training is learning to do a guide task almost. She keeps me with whoever I'm out and about with. So if I'm by myself, this doesn't really apply. But if I'm with my boyfriend or a friend or just a group of people, I, yes, Marco, I see you. You're a very good boy. <laughs> I tell her follow and then she stays with that person. And if I start to wander off, she'll kind of like pull me in that direction. Unless I tell her, no, it's okay, we're not following. I want to go to Sephora while he goes to EB Games. That sounds very stereotypical, but it's literally what happens when we go to the mall. That is immensely helpful because it kind of takes the pressure off of like the fear of having a dissociative episode or having a panic attack and just wandering around and getting lost. It just kind of keeps me safe in the moment. This task is also useful for getting me to safety. I will ask her where's the door or where's the car and then she will kind of guide me there. Another big thing that psychiatric service dogs can be trained to do is behavior interruption. So I have this habit, um, it's actually called trichotillomania, but I haven't been diagnosed with it, so I don't want to claim that and la la la. But I pull out my hair when I'm stressed, and I most of the time don't even realize that I'm doing it. So something that I've started training Sadie to do is to paw at me when I start pulling out my eyebrows. I don't know if you can tell, but these are like for sure drawn on. <laughs> Thank you makeup! But I, when I start picking at my eyebrows, she will Eventually, we only started training this the other day, but she'll paw at me and I have What's it called? I think it's called restless leg syndrome like when I'm about to start getting <laughs> It um, manifests in my legs. I guess I bounce my leg rapidly as so many people do So when I do that she jumps on my legs to physically stop me from doing it Or she'll just paw at me and alert me if I'm not sitting down and I start bouncing my leg when I'm standing there Another thing that a psychiatric service dog can be trained to do, this is really good for anxiety and PTSD, is you can train block and cover, and one is where the dog stands behind you, and one is where the dog stands in front of you, and it's just kind of like a crowd control thing. Nobody can sneak up on you because the dog's there, and if somebody starts walking up behind me, she'll often like rub against me and let me know, hey, someone's coming which is huge for me. I don't like being snuck up on just PTSD things. <laughs> and she can also stand between me and other people so that if anybody's getting in my face, they can't because there's a dog on the ground there and they would have to step on the dog and come on, what kind of monster steps on a dog? <laughs> that really helps to alleviate most of the anxiety when we go out and about because I know she's got my back and sometimes quite literally, and I've got hers, we're a team. 
What else? Oh, psychiatric service dogs can also be trained to detect the stress hormone in your breath and your sweat. So the way to train this um, that I have found online, I think I want to make a video about this on my channel eventually. Um, subscribe. <laughs> because it's so hard to find information about it. But from my understanding, with the limited information I could find, is you can take a cotton ball and when you haven't eaten or drank anything in a while and you start to feel the anxiety rising, you can put it in your mouth. The idea of having a cotton ball in your mouth, real appealing, right? You can collect the saliva that way and the stress hormone ideally will be in that sample or something that I have chosen to do instead of putting it in my mouth is put it under my armpit and just kind of hold it there while I'm panicking <laughs> and then you can take the cotton ball samples put it in a container or a bag in the fridge and then use that to train kind of reward them when they detect that scent and then eventually they'll be able to tell you hey I smell the thing you're gonna panic should we go sit down somewhere or grab some lunch I'm sure there is a whole lot more that psychiatric service dogs can do, but because I'm trying to think of it right now and it's for somebody else's channel, my thoughts have all escaped me. But I hope this was at least a little bit helpful for some of you. I'm a huge, huge fan of psychiatric service dogs and service dogs in general. I think dogs are so good. And another thing to point out, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, you get sad sometimes, so you make your dog work for you. That's not a real thing. If my dog doesn't feel like working that day, she doesn't have to work. That's a common misconception about service dogs in general, is that they're slaves and we make them do this. They will be retired early if they just decide, no, nope, you know what, I don't want to work anymore. So, <laughs> that makes me feel even, even more in love with my little pup, because she actively wants to work for me. And that's good, because <laughs> I, I need her. She's my little lifeline. Um, I don't know how to end this, because it's not my channel, but I think Chris is coming back. So I'm going to just show you a clip of my service dog in her vest, and uh, I'll be on my way. <laughs> Bye. Look at that. Kalayla's like a sidekick. She knew I was coming back. But <laughs> anyways, anyways, like I learned so, so, so much. Like. I had no idea. I had no idea. And this, I was just saying this in the video I did about Dr. Mike and Gabby Hanna. Like, I admit that I don't know everything. And I had no idea service dogs could do that much. And so much of it made sense too, especially the way that Kalayla was explaining it. Like, especially the mindfulness of when you're doing certain behaviors, like when she was talking about pulling her hair, but also that safety and the comfort. And she was also talking about how uh, the dog will like lay on her chest and it's kind of like a weighted blanket. Like, that is so so awesome. But anyways, I would love to get some information together um, about how to go about getting a service dog or training a service dog in the United States as well as other areas. So if you have any of that information, go ahead and post it down in the comments. I'll try to update the uh, description so everybody can see it and potentially go get yourself a service dog. But it's super cool. And you guys, please, 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 like I have so many of you, so many of you who struggle with PTSD or CPTSD and you're all always asking me to make videos about it. Kalayla's entire channel is about that. So please go over to her channel, go subscribe, go check out her videos. Like she is so awesome. She is actually in our Discord server now. By the way, I'm talking to you. Why aren't you in our Discord server yet? We have over 300 people in there, people just supporting one another, having conversations, laughing, great time up in there. So come join our Discord. We also have a subreddit. So all that information is down in the description below, all right? But anyways, I wanna hear comments from all of you down below. What is your experience with service dogs? Or do you think a service dog could help you with your PTSD or CPTSD or even your anxiety or depression? Let me know down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. Don't forget, that brand new intro song from K is over on the Patreon, so go check it out. And if you would like to subscribe to Kalayla, boom, click or tap right there, all right? So thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.